What's up? I'm Trevor, and this is Saturday's Warrior, the channel where we talk about BYU, the Big 12, college football, realignment, all that good stuff. And today we are doing our Week 9 Power Rankings for the Big 12, something we do each week. We also do midweek our picks for the upcoming week. When we can, we get a segment in called Know the Foe, where we bring in a guest from uh, the opposing uh, the fan base of the opposing team for BYU that week. So uh, when we can, so we've had on uh, fans from uh, Arkansas, Kansas, at TCU. Uh, hopefully, we can keep that going. And then also Saturdays we do our instant reaction after the BYU game, and and then we get that uh, going all over again each week. And also any other segments we can get in when we can. So. Uh, be sure to like this video, but also subscribe to the channel so you can catch all that. And uh, most importantly, be sure to leave comments. Uh, let us know, for example, today, how you'd rank the Big 12 going into week nine. Uh, we do this to engage with people and to have that conversation going. So be sure to do that. And so now without any further ado, let's jump into our power rankings. All right. So one and two shouldn't surprise anybody. It's still OU in Texas. Both of them had close calls this week against what should have been inferior competition against new members of the Big 12. Uh, you know, and arguably those two teams should have won. They made, you know, some blunders down the stretch, but both escaped. And I don't think either one did anything to change their current standing. I think we can agree one and two. Number three is Kansas State. And this is where we moved them back up to. They've actually been here I think most of the season, I think this was to be expected, not exactly the way we expected it, but we um, knew they were good. And now we'll see how this dual quarterback system will work going forward. So far, uh, they had a lot of success. So I, you know, you certainly can't count them out. I think they're probably the best bet outside of Texas and OU to break into the conference championship. But, uh, you know, they still have some. Uh, tough games down the stretch, including one against Texas. So we will see, you know, in that sense, they control their own destiny, but certainly got to like what you see from Kansas State as of late. And then at four, we have uh, OSU and the Pokies. We were probably a little bit uh, over exuberant last week and moving them up to four, uh, you know, based on just a couple games. And that might have been a little high to move them ahead of some other schools but based on this week it looks like we had them in the right place so i think maybe last week last week we overcorrected and now um but they ended up in in the right place after all because right now they've had three very impressive wins in a row over good quality um you know middle of the pack top of the middle of the big 12 and so you really got to see uh you know tip your hat to mike gundy for the the real change mid season because I was really down on them. You know, you can't, you still got to hold South Alabama against them. That loss was pretty bad, but this team has really turned things around. And I would love to see that kind of mid season change with BYU. I mean, between last year, this year, it kind of feels like we are who we are. No matter what we try, things just aren't really changing and so if BYU could pull out that kind of switch, I would be ecstatic. So I don't know how they did it. Um, obviously, narrowing down to a single quarterback uh, was a start. You know, is he a world beater? No, but it gives them some consistency and something to build off of. And I'm not really sure how they've done it. But, uh, you know, again, I think Gundy's showing that uh, he knows what he's doing. And then at five, we have KU and Iowa State. Now, these two were both on bye weeks, so they kind of moved up more because of, uh, you know, the other things going on around them. I still think these are um, mid top, middle of the pack in the in the conference. And last week I got a couple comments saying Iowa State is too low. They should be higher. And so th they are higher kind of by default this week. And, you know, I was thinking, you know, I, sh I arguably could put Iowa State ahead of Kansas. And so I thought perhaps I would do that this week. But I just went back and looked at their records. And I just like Kansas's body of work better. They have better losses, fewer losses. And uh, so I just think that, you know, like the Texas game, they were that was actually pretty close most of the game till the fourth quarter. 
And, uh, you know, so I think what they've done is, is a, on the resume is just, just better so far, but they play in a couple weeks. So they, you know, Iowa state got a chance to prove me wrong and go out there and move ahead of KU. Then at seven, we have West Virginia. So they, they took a little bit of a tumble this week. You know, again, we knew that they were a little bit more shallow on the, on the, talent side of things, but we saw them outplay expectations and really come together. And, you know, they, they had a tough loss against Houston, which, you know, Houston showed a lot of heart against Texas this week. We'll get to them later. So that that's not so terrible, you know, in a, in a, uh, Hail Mary type situation, a loss, you know, though, what, what we would have loved to have seen is this team really rally together, kind of forget about that, move on and go back home and play against a team in Oklahoma State who struggled early on in the season. And uh, really, uh, West Virginia just couldn't get it done. And and so, again, OSU has shown that they've really turned things around. So I don't want to hold it against West Virginia too much, but certainly uh, took a hit there. Having said that, they still took care of business against number eight team, which is TCU. And even though they got completely pummeled this week, they did not move down because look at the teams below them, which we'll get to, um, were not have not really been more impressive. And so I think TCU, uh, because of their body of work overall, and, and I think we understand they're on a backup quarterback, and, uh, you know, so that's who arguably is is better than their starter but um so give them a little bit of leeway i think they still are one of those teams that has enough talent that if they pull it together they could pull out a stretch and and uh, rattle off some wins here at the end of the season however their schedule continues to get tougher so we will see what happens with them but they didn't drop any further because look at these teams after them we got BYU who you know what happened to them this week against K, uh, K State was the same thing they did to BYU the week prior. So I could not move BYU ahead of them, but uh, BYU had a good showing against Texas Tech, who has been all over the place this year and looks like a team that really just does not know who they are. And so um, those two teams end up switching places, and uh, Texas Tech, I think they've shown uh, that they have enough they were on their third string quarterback, so if they're able to get one of the those other guys back at all this season, I mean, if they're able to have their uh, first or second string quarterback, I think this would be a different situation for them. Uh, so I don't want to hold that against them too much, but and and I liked a lot what I saw from uh, uh, from uh, shoot, I'm drawing a blank now on uh, on their quarterback's name, but. Uh, you know, as a freshman coming in, he showed a lot of heart and a lot of grit, but um, there's going to be some growing pains there. So have BYU moving up ahead of them. And then UCF, as well as actually Houston, both had, as we talked about, great showings against the top two teams in the league and had an opportunity to win. Uh, Houston actually has a win in conference over a legacy Big 12 member. So arguably they could be ahead of UCF, but I would say a last second Hail Mary uh, pass over uh, West Virginia at home is less impressive than what UCF did against K-State and uh, and now OU. Both the, and uh, both of those were away games for UCF. So overall, I still like UCF better. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, if you like, and, and, and Houston showed a lot the last couple weeks that I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, have another surprise win. Uh, throughout this season where they're not favored but UCF's got Rice Plumley back and so I like their chances and then we have the guys at the bottom of the league we got Baylor who moved up because they they won against Cincinnati and that was uh really that you know both teams have struggled a lot this season but in a head-to-head and Baylor did it away you know it was a home game for Cincy so Cincy is now firmly at the bottom uh, Baylor good job you're not at the bottom of our power rankings anymore and so not a, really a whole lot of movement uh, at all this week. Uh, we'll see if this week uh, teams are able to uh, mix it up some more. All right, so those are our power rankings for week nine. Please let us know in the comments how you would rank the Big 12 this week and what we got right, what we got wrong, 
uh, we'd love to hear it. And also, please be sure to like the channel and subscribe so that way you can keep coming back, check this out next week and our other videos throughout the week. Thanks again, and as always, go Cougs!